The mob farm has been doing really well for us. We uh, took I took a shulker box load of gunpowder out of here to be able to make rockets. So we have plenty of rockets now. I uh, may come back at some point in the near future because I've noticed I have one choke point left where I, I can get rid of mobs collecting. And that's right there where they they like choke down to that two by two hole. I think I have a way to fix that, but I'm not gonna be able to do that today because right now we need to make an iron farm because well i i use literally all of my iron making this uh storage system right here and to the point where i had to go mining for iron for like a couple hours just to get enough iron to do it all so we need iron now we have a villager breeder already which means that the villager part's going to be easy if you need to get the villagers for the iron farm you're going to want to check out the villager breeder episode but we need to fly to the location where our iron farm is going to go because i'm about to get on stream here in a few minutes and dig this thing out and this area where we're going to do it, I've chosen over here. It's uh, way more than 96 blocks away from my nearest quote unquote village, which is the trading hall I have over there. So first of all, when you choose the area where your iron farm is going to go, make sure it's at least a minimum of 96 blocks away from any other sort of quote unquote village in the area. So that's basically anywhere where you have a villager linked to a workstation or to a bed. And for your iron farm specifically, you're gonna to wanna to make sure there's no other beds anywhere within that 96 block radius for any reason for the uh, for the farm. So we're gonna make sure we don't have any beds in the area until everything's all set. Once everything's 100% set and working, if we wanna add a bed somewhere to sleep in, that would be fine. Um, and I'm gonna choose this area here. So on stream, I'm going to get together with everybody. We're going to dig out this big area and then I'll let you know on the other side how big this needs to be. And if you'd like to see the digging extravaganza, then I recommend you head over to the playlist with the streams in it and go give it a watch. Ooh, I have a big hole here. It took quite a while to dig this out. I, I really need to get a beacon. Um, it would have made this a lot faster. Stream basically yelled at me the whole time. Use a beacon. Why don't you use a beacon? I don't have one yet. We haven't done an episode on it. Be patient, people. Uh, but we do have the big hole here now. And of course, like odds are, you're probably going to build this above ground. So you're not going to need to worry about digging a, a huge hole. And the hole's so big because a, a lot of the trading hall portion of this iron farm. Yes, we're doing a trading hall with the iron farm. It's going to be going here at the bottom level. So... I had to dig out a lot extra anyways. So uh, what you need to do right now is you need to find your center. Um, I have it marked by this cobblestone right here. And you need to go up one, two, three, four. And on the fifth block, this is where you're going to build from. What you need to do is you need to go eight blocks in each direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do that each direction and make a large platform. Okay, so once you have your platform that's 17 across by 17 across, come over to any side, go up by one. Um, that's a temporary block right there. You need to go in one, two, three, four. And go ahead and circle in this whole platform with a four wide platform all the way around raised up by one. Okay, I cleared myself a little bit more space around here just because aesthetically I, I got plans for things. Um, but also just wanted to be able to show you that you also want to go around and make a border all the way around the outside of this. That way you don't have water that we end up placing here in just a little bit end up flowing out. Once you get your border placed around, go ahead and place a block here, here and here in all four corners. OK, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the kill chamber area and the drop chamber area for the items because our items are actually going to be able to just drop down into a little hole right here. Um, you can kind of from there take the items wherever and however you want to. I, I do have a plan that I'll show a little bit later for what we're going to do. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a half slab and put it right here. We'll put a full block on top of that. We are going to take a bunch of signs. We're going to do some stuff with those. <laughs> we're going to place a sign right there facing in any direction. Put a sign on either side of that and then do signs on each one of those in each direction this and this so now what we're going to do is we're going to place one sign on the outside of just any one of these signs this middle one will be fine we're going to go up one like this okay so now we've gone out and up and we're going to go one two in this direction and just kind of make a circle going around the outside of these signs going four this way four this way and four this way 
Now, in the near future, this is where our lava killing system is going to go. The golems, they'll float in and then their heads will be touching the lava at that level. But we're going to be doing a couple things above here first. So we're not going to put the lava in quite yet. Uh, what we actually need to do first is we need to install these floors where the beds are going to go. Now, before we put the bed floors in, let's kind of talk about let's talk about beds and numbers of villagers. So the way that Bedrock Edition Iron Farms work is you have to have a minimum of 20 beds and a minimum of 10 villagers. For every 10 villagers that you have, it allows another golem to be alive during that time. So having 20 villagers, for example, means that you can have two golems spawn inside of the system at the same time. It doesn't increase the rates at which the golems will spawn. They'll still spawn in at the same speed. But the reason why it increases your rates to have more villagers is because if you only have 10 villagers and one golem spawns, another golem may want to spawn, but it can't and the, the spawn will fail. So having 20 villagers is better than having 10 villagers because two golems can be alive at the same time. Now, you actually get a little bit of an increase by having 30 villagers in the um, area instead of 20 because every so often the game will try to spawn in a third iron golem before your first two have been killed. Now, going beyond that isn't really going to see any type of an increase in rates. So 40 villagers, 50 villagers, 60 villagers, having that many is not really going to affect the speed of your iron farm. But we are going to be using this place as a villager trading hall as well. So we may by May, I mean, I definitely will be putting more than 30 villagers here because I want to have that trading hall ability. Now, for you guys here specifically, what you're going to want to do is add in however many beds right now that you want to have villagers for. And you're going to make these beds starting in the center right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily place a block right here, glass block. And you're going to want to use glass because you don't want something that is spawnable by the iron golems. And you don't want something that's going to block iron golem spawns in any way. So we're going to place a block there and a block here. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a nine by nine platform. So if I remember correctly, a full nine by nine platform like this will hold up to 42 beds. I'm going to be going with two of these platforms and that's going to be up to 84 villagers. Now, having more villagers than beds will break the farm. So if you have 20 beds and 30 villagers, no more iron golems are going to spawn. So just make sure that you always account for that. Um, in my case, since I'm going to be doing 84, I'm going to actually fill in this top layer first like this, and I'm going to end up placing beds on this top layer. Actually, I haven't even spent the time to gather enough beds to do this. So after this clip, I'm probably going to go do that. And 84 beds is, is quite a lot. So it's probably going to take me a little bit of time. But once I get the beds here, I'll show you the order in which you need to place them to fit 42 beds per layer. Also, one thing to note is you have to do things at this height. If we were to go up any higher than this one right here, where we're going to put these beds, the farm would not work. So make sure that you use this placement of beds. Otherwise, your farm's not going to work. So to briefly explain how this works, when the, when the game makes a village, which means a bed is within the area of a villager, um, a village like center is established and you can add in a whole bunch of beds at that point. The center bed is supposed to stay around that one bed that you initially placed down. Um, although there are things that can make that center shift to a different bed. Now, when it comes to spawning golems, the game will look in a eight block radius. Roughly, it's a 16 by 16 square around that bed to spawn a golem and it can reach upwards of six blocks or downwards six blocks. So you need to make sure that you don't have any additional spawnable blocks other than your platform in that area. The game will choose the highest spawnable block. So it used to be where you used to have to have two layers to have this farm work efficiently. It's not the case anymore. You only need one layer to it. Um, we would not want a platform up here where golems could possibly spawn because they, they would spawn up here instead of down here because it's it would be the highest spawnable block so you see there's no blocks around here that the golem can possibly spawn on they cannot spawn on glass blocks 
the reason why we've chosen this size of the uh, platform and this sort of a platform for the beds and its location is because it will make sure that no matter what happens if the center of the village shifts to any bed anywhere on this platform the entire 16 by 16 area in which golems can spawn will always be located on this platform so we will not get golem spawns outside anywhere it will always be contained within here but now i need to go get a whole lot of beds okay so once you have your number of beds ready you want to go to where the center block is and ignore that one <laughs> you're going to go in a circle around the center block just like this now one of the things we want to do before we lay the rest of the beds, I, I literally just thought about this, is we want one of these beds preferably to be the center of the village. OK, and to, to guarantee that that's what happens, we need to bring a villager in here and we're actually going to want to keep a villager inside of this area. We want them to be right up here with the beds, maybe not like exactly like he doesn't need to be touching the beds but he needs to be up here we'll probably create a little chamber right in here for the villager to sit and for this villager right here you're going to want it to be a nitwit villager the nitwit villager he's a little guy dressed in green and he can't take any kind of professions and we want a villager here that can't take professions so you need to find yourself a nitwit villager and you need to put him in a little hole right up here by the beds okay we have our nitwit villager he he's in here he's safe we'll put a we'll put a torch with this guy just to make sure he doesn't feel too too scared of the dark and now we're going to go through and we're going to finish the pattern to get all of the beds in place so what we're going to do is we're going to take beds and we're going to place them straight across starting from right here like so uh, we'll do the same thing on the opposite side and then we'll fill in these little gaps that we created and then lastly we'll start on the corner and we'll do a ring around now, if you're going to go with the larger amount of beds like I am, what you can do is you can you can knock out the glass that separates the two sections just like this. And then once you do that, you can place the beds in the same pattern. And then just like before, you can go ahead and you can take out these glass blocks, too. They're not needed anymore. So go ahead, and just collect those back. Now, once you've reached this point, you can start placing in water and a lava. I don't have the lava on me right now, so we'll get the water wherever I put it. Where'd you go? Oh, there's my water source. So. Uh, the water placement is pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to place a water bucket right here and then we're going to skip the block right beside it and then place a water bucket right here. And then we'll just take this water and place it all the way down. A little trick you can use as well to get yourself more water is you can create a water source by skipping a block. So you go from here, skip this one, go to right here and this middle one becomes a water source block. Now, once you get beyond that point, they're not going to create water source blocks anymore because they're just going to fall straight down. But you at least have one right here in the corner if you can grab the right one each time to use to continually go through and place. And you're just going to do the same thing on each side. Water up top, skip the block right beside the one in the corner and everything else. You just place the water down. OK, finally, I do have the lava here and we just want to place it really like ideally right there on that middle sign. Make sure you don't let it spill out because if, if it does, it's going to create a mess. Uh, we're just going to pillar up here. We're going to take the lava. We're going to place it on this middle sign and hope that we place all the signs correctly. And yes, looks like it did. So now we have a lava blade up here. But now we have the task of moving all of the uh, villagers into the area that we need. And then you have to link them for the trading hall portion. Now, luckily, we don't need to lock in their professions yet. It's OK to change them. So for now, we want to bring any adult villagers that are not nitwits into the area. Now, before we start pulling villagers in here, we need to do a couple things. First of all, we need some sort of like item storage thing set up because we need to collect our iron as soon as like the, the golems, they start spawning. So um, I think I think I have a plan. OK, I've, I've drawn this out a little bit in creative mode and you'll see the design a little bit later. But basically the items, they'll fall down through here. We'll just place a hopper, put it right here and they'll loop around in this little loop and find their way into the chests. And I don't have any sorting, you know, that we're going to get the little uh, flowers and stuff in here, too. Maybe some cat string here and there, but it'll be all right. It'll be fine. OK, we got our slots laid out. I have a total of 84 laid out here. There's, I think, 36 down here. 
and whatever the remainder is 48 48 I think there's 48 down here so basically we have all the slots that we're going to need for villagers to go into now I think I mentioned this in the last clip but in case I didn't when we bring the villagers in I do not have to set their professions permanently by trading with them um, and as soon as we get 10 villagers in here this thing is going to start producing golems so this entire project like filling all of the villager trades in locking them all in etc this is going to be more of a long-term project that i don't have to tackle all right away what i will probably do, do though is get 20 to 30 probably 30 villagers in here and maybe get their professions set to what i want them as as well and I even kind of have things like sectioned off for different types of professions around that way. If I want to more easily find where I don't know the Fletchers are like I could come over here or whatever the case may be. So now it's time to move our villagers in from our villager breeder. Remember, check out the villager breeder episode if you haven't already. Um, it's a good way to get all the villagers that you're going to need for your uh, farm. In my case, my villagers, they're all the way out here and I need to empty my inventory so I can take a whole bunch of rails and bring them out from where are they at? Where are you guys at? Oh, here they are. They're all in here. So it's about to, it's about time to start moving them. Okay. I think we have a good system here that's going to fill in this area pretty quick. Well, at least as quick as we have villagers. Let's fly over to our villager area and give this guy a little push. Go on. And let's follow him out and see how he does. Yep, he's going to make it. <laughs> that actually scared me a little bit. Um, and there he goes. Woohoo. Okay. Um, we need to we need to lock you in. Cuz I want your cart back, I think. Uh, let's just yeah, we'll, we'll just do that. We'll just do that. And uh and then we'll lay down protect profession blocks here in a little bit. Okay, we've crossed the 10 villager threshold. So now time to go up top and see if we see any iron golems. Ah, you know what? I didn't wait long because I wanted to double check this. We Our beds or our ceiling above our beds is not high enough. So if you have a block within six blocks of the pillow of any one of these beds, it's going to shut the farm off or whatever one's the center. And we don't for sure know what one's the center. So what we'll do is we'll go through and I think I'm going to knock out two blocks above and that'll give us enough ceiling height to where we don't have to worry about our farm being shut off for this purpose. And I just found a mistake that I made. I made and a lot of you are probably screaming at me when I made it too. I don't know how, but I actually I put this I put this one too high. This needs to lower down by one. And I think because of that those beds need to lower down by one which is probably why I'm not getting any golem spawns. So troubleshooting, it's all part of making farms. Okay, the beds have been reset and lowered down by one. And at some point in the near future here, we should see, we should see golems start to spawn. Now, when you first establish the village, like I just have, like reestablished it just now, it can sometimes take a little bit. So you gotta be patient. They might not always start spawning in right away. Okay, so we do have enough um, villagers here to make golems start spawning. I did notice I made one small mistake. This is what happens when you build farms in survival. You're going to make mistakes, just fix them. And my mistake was that I put the beds one block too high. So I just lowered them down one block. And then also I had a sign on top of this and the lava was sitting one block too high as well. So I lowered the lava down by one. I lowered the beds down by one. And then you have to have six solid or you have to have six blocks of air above whatever the center of the village is. If you have a solid block in that area of whatever the center bed is, and we don't know what bed is the center bed, right? Because it's kind of impossible to tell. Then the farm won't work. So I did dig up a little bit higher there just to make sure that there is nothing that would possibly um, block spawns from happening. So now we're ready to go. Um, the reason nothing's spawning yet is because our villagers don't have professions. Your villagers do have to have professions. Now, again, like I said, we don't have to keep these as our permanent professions if we don't want to, and I might not want to. And they don't have to be linked up to the block right beside them yet. Ooh, or do they? Actually, they might need to. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's block these guys in. Because I think they do have a they have a work requirement. They do need to work. 
So what I'm going to do is I need to find a way or have a way to trap them in. And usually the best way to do that is going to be uh, trap doors. If I can find I got wood on me. We'll just make some trap doors. There we go. There we go. So first we just want to make sure that they're all blocked in, which they are, which means we can now knock out these blocks. Okay. And now what we could do is we take trap doors and put it at this level right here. A trap door right here makes it so that villager, when you take this block out, he can't get out. So then we can go through and we can kind of set all of their or like link them all to the profession blocks properly and not worry about any of them escaping. Now, in this video, one of the things I'm not going to go over is how to properly like cycle through trades to get villagers to get the trades that you want them to have. I have an episode already did on that with making a trading hall earlier in the season. So I would just go back and check that one out. But we do need to make sure we link these guys up to the blocks and put the block in front of them that they link with. So we'll put this down. We'll wait for little green particles. And hello. Oh, and we find which one it links with, which is that guy. Easiest way to tell is to look at what uniform they have on. So bam. Now that guy, he'll link up with that. Boom. And we can just move on to the next place it down and then go through this until you link them all up. And now with all of them having professions, should be able to go look up top and let's see if we have a golem yet. Not yet. Sometimes it'll take the village a few minutes to establish itself. The villagers to count as working and for a golem to spawn. At this point, we've met all of the conditions to make a golem spawn. So it's just a matter of waiting a little while. Once they start spawning, they'll spawn in pretty regular. And finally, I want to show you one way to troubleshoot your iron farm. And mine's not spawning anything right now. So I don't know if I'm having this problem right now or not. It's kind of hard for me to tell. So one thing we can do to troubleshoot and fix a broken iron farm is not working properly is we can go and reset the beds. So what we need to do is we need to work our way up here and we need to take out every single bed that's in here. Now, after you remove all of the beds, give the game, I don't know, five, maybe even 10 minutes to be safe. Also log out and back into your world and maybe even leave the loaded chunks and come back to them. This will make sure that any existing village data gets deleted or removed. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and just place the beds back in the same way that you did the first time. And finally, once you have all the beds back in, now the waiting game begins. And after waiting a few minutes, you should find that you have Golem starting to spawn. We're going to hang out here a few minutes, make sure the village reestablishes itself. Maybe even again, kind of like I mentioned earlier, like let's leave the area, unload the chunks, maybe even do a fresh relog. The village will rebuild itself after a short period of time, at which point we'll have Golem spawning. OK, and I had a bit of troubleshooting of my own to do because I've I kind of ran across some new like mechanics that were really messing me up with getting the farm running. But as you can see, we have an iron golem now. So apparently you can have too many beds for the number of villagers that are inside of your area. So we have I think I have 16, 17 villagers in here now, something right around there. And I had at first 84 beds. So I cut that in half to 42 beds. It still wouldn't spawn any golems. So I took out that outer ring of beds. And now, as you can see, golems are spawning, which I need to get some lava in place once I find my lava bucket. And after some busy in real life stuff, I've been sitting here watching golems or I guess not watching them AFK while golems have been spawning and dying. And I'm kind of curious, kind of curious what we got going on down here. I wasn't able to AFK a ton. Oh, man, look at that. We got iron now, people. We got iron now. Now, I would like to go through, I guess while I'm doing this, I want to do it all one time, right? I don't want to have to go through multiple times to fill in villagers and link up large amounts of profession blocks. So I'm trying to think of exactly what villagers I want where. We're going to end up keeping the toolsmiths over here. That way we can come in and trade iron with them to get emeralds. Um, over on this side, I think I want to put farmer villagers. That way we can trade to get um golden carrots and if i get some kind of crop farms going we can also bring some crops down here for easy mass trading as well so i should be able to unlink these guys one at a time like this and then place down a new profession block to change his profession and link him up with this one hopefully hey there he goes okay 
So when we change them, we just have to make sure we do it one at a time. We don't want to do multiple because that's probably going to get things messed up. So I'll go through, I'll grab it, wait for him to unlink from it. He won't change his outfit for some reason, but we just give him a few seconds. Then we'll place down a new block and several seconds later, he should now link up with this one. There we go. And over here, I think these guys, we will make them stone cutters so we can trade to get quartz and maybe some, I think you could get terracotta and stuff from stone cutters too. So, or stone masons. So we'll pull these up, put down our stone cutters and we have a stone mason. And finally, the deed is done. I need to close all of these because I don't need to accidentally start a raid and kill a bunch of my villagers like I may have done somewhere else. Uh, but we have an X uh, section for uh, stone masons, for some, what are they called? What's your name again? I always want to say priest. Is it priest? Cleric? A section for clerics. We got a section for farmers. Some more farmers. Also added in one of every other profession I didn't want a lot of because we, we may go over them in a future episode. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And um, up here, we have a ton, a whole ton of Fletchers because A, I would like to have their um, tipped arrows and B, a lot of times they're going to trade something that's going to matter to me in a farm that's coming up later on. Um, and then we have all of our um, workers that we would be trading the iron that we get from the farm with right here. So weaponsmiths and armorsmiths and toolsmiths are all up through here. And then I added in for now temporarily some more stonemasons. But this section I'm not going to lock in. It's just going to kind of chill here. And eventually, if I feel like I need a particular trade or material, then I can come and just these will be my flex guys. Like, oh, OK, I'll just change them to something else because th they were never locked in. Um, iron golems, they have been spawning very regularly. Um, I can show you the iron that I've accumulated in the time that I've been working on everything. You can hear uh, iron golem dying right now. Tons of iron there, some iron stacking in there. And then I left myself a way for me to get villagers here in the future by digging a hole through the cave system. And that way I don't have to have that ugly rail traveling all the way across. So think that's going to do it for today's episode. This one took quite a while. Real life's been super busy. If you'd like to know how, follow me on Discord, on Twitter, and you can kind of find out what exactly is going on with me. But I want to hurry up and get this episode out for you guys. So we're going to call it quits now. I got a good episode planned for you on the next one. And click that like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an episode. And I'll see you next time. Bye!